it's time to take a look at the 2024 AP Chemistry exam questions. The few response questions have just been released, and now we're going to walk through the answers. Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug, and this is my walkthrough for FRQ question number six. I need to let you know that I don't work for College Board, and this is not an official answer key. You'll need to wait a few months for that. I'm just a guy who's been teaching AP Chemistry for the past 24 years. And if you're getting ready for next year's exam, then check out my full AP Chemistry course videos right here on YouTube, as well as my comprehensive review materials, along with exclusive tips and tricks over at ultimatereviewpacket.com. Now, let's get started. Free response question number six is a short question. This is worth four points, and it looks like it's starting out with a kinetics question. It says, at elevated temperatures, NO2 undergoes decomposition in the gas phase, forming NO and O2, as represented by the equation we see here. A scientist measures the change in NO2 concentration over the first 100 seconds of the reaction at 546 degrees Celsius. The scientist uses the data collected from the experiment to generate these two graphs. And the scientist makes the claim that the rate law for this reaction is rate equals K times the concentration of NO2 squared. So how do the graphs indicate that? Well, the key is focus on the graph that's a straight line. So that's the second graph right here. And since the graph of 1 over the concentration of NO2 versus time is a straight line, that tells us that the reaction must be second order with respect to that reactant. Now likewise, if the natural log of the concentration versus time had been a straight line, then it would have been first order, but of course it's not. So if you got that question right, you can give yourself the point. On part B, it says at a certain point in the reaction, the rate of disappearance of NO2 is determined to be 6.52 times 10 to the negative seventh molarity per second. Determine the rate of appearance in molarity per second of oxygen at this same point in the reaction. Well, what we have to do is realize that the rate of disappearance of one of the reactants is related to the rate of appearance of any of the products by just sheer stoichiometry. And since the mole ratio here is a 2 to 1, well, the rate of disappearance of NO2 to the rate of appearance of O2 is going to be a 2 to 1 ratio. So you can just take that number and divide it by 2. Or if you prefer, you can you know, work it out and say you know, 6.52 times 10 to the negative 7th molarity per second NO2 and just do a mole ratio basically. So NO2 on the bottom, O2 on the top. It's one O2 molecule for every two NO2 molecules. So it's just you know, one half of that and cancel it out and multiply it. And it's 3.26 times 10 to the negative 7th molarity per second oxygen. So that's uh, the answer there. It's just, just stoichiometry using a mole ratio. So part C, we have a molecule, actually two molecules here. It says NO2 is a molecule that contains an odd number of electrons and can be oxidized to form the NO2 positive ion. In NO2, the unpaired electron is presumed to be localized on the nitrogen atom, like we see right here, as shown in this Lewis diagram. In the box on the right, complete the Lewis diagram for NO2 positive. Be sure to show all bonding and non-bonding electrons. So whenever we write or draw a Lewis electron dot diagram, I always like to start with the outside and work my way in. So we'll put the six valence electrons around the oxygen, six because it's in group 16, so six dots around that one, and then six dots around this oxygen as well, so six there. Now, I would normally put five dots for nitrogen because nitrogen is in group 15. However, this is a positively charged ion, which means it's basically lost one electron. So instead of putting five dots in here, I'm only going to put in four so we can account for that positive charge. So there are my four dots. And once again, the goal is for everything to have an octet. The oxygens have an octet, but the nitrogen does not. So I'm going to move, let's move these two dots here on the outside of oxygen to the inside, just like that. My nitrogen is up to six. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side of oxygen, just like that. And so now everything has an octet. And so if you got this diagram, then give yourself a point. And part C2 says a student makes the claim that the bond angles in NO2 and NO2 
positive are different from each other. Do you agree or disagree? Well, you should agree. And the reason is the fact that there's a lone electron here on the NO2 molecule here on the left, well, that lone electron is going to be exerting some repulsion. And so that means that this bond angle in between the N and the two oxygens will be significantly less than 180 degrees because of that repulsion right there. Over on the right side, though, we have a linear structure. Looks like we have two double bonds that would be formed here. And so this tells me that this is going to be a linear structure, 180 degrees. So yes, these two bond angles are absolutely different from each other. Well, if you were, were taking the AP exam here this uh, year, I hope you got all four points. If not, I hope you understand why you missed those. My name is Jeremy Krug. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you're taking AP Chemistry next year and just kind of scouting out the questions, uh, join my channel here, subscribe, think about getting the ultimate review packet for next year, and I hope to see you very soon when we're going to go right on to question number seven. Thanks for watching.